hi guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in to my new subscribers i noticed i have like quite a few welcome to my channel my name is blessing damilola d blessing damilola i film about faith lifestyle relationship um anything i film about is always faith-based this is a faith-based channel okay so i just thought to like introduce myself to you guys um yeah so in today's video i'm going to be having a story time i noticed that it's been a while i sat down to just connect with you guys and all of that because i've been bringing people over to my channel to talk and all of that so this time around i'm going to be having a story time so without further ado let's jump right into this video If you're an OG on this channel, you would remember when I filmed a video on imposter syndrome and how my past job, you know, contributed to that and made me start to doubt myself and all of that. I'm going to link the video in the description box. You can click on it and watch the video if you have not. So I'm going to be just telling you about that job and all what happened. In um, I finished serving in 2020. Yes. So after my service, the lockdown happened and I was at home for that period. And after the lockdown, I started to like actively job hunt, like search for a job. And one of those days, I was just going through my chat on Facebook and I saw that I got a chat from someone that asked me, oh, you studied something related to agriculture. Do you mind coming to work with, him, with me? And then bless his heart. So I got that um opportunity i went for the interview and i got the job like on the spot so i started firstly where i was staying was very far from that workplace so i was literally spending about 40 percent of my salary on transport <laughs> yes i was literally spending 40 percent of the salary on transport so it wasn't like um it was the best job i could have gotten at that moment but my mantra you know at that point in my life was do what you can until you can do what you want but at the same time you don't just do what you can and do any anything and accept to be treated anyhow because you want to do what you can of course you have to still consider some things and let me not jump <laughs> So I got the job and um, I wasn't given a role related to agriculture. I was given a role in the admin and I really wanted to get into the agri because that's what I studied. I wanted to practice and I needed the experience um, for, you know, to just start up my career in that field. So somehow I started to, I found myself going to the farm. I enjoyed it at first. Like it was interesting. It was a fun experience for me until it became like my duty i was posted to the farm i had to stay on the farm from monday through to Saturday, um, friday i'll go back home and all of that it wasn't the most um comfortable job um work experience at that point but i kept telling myself that it would get better i only need to like get the experience and i can use the experience to get a better job and that but there was a time where it started to affect me okay there's something that happened one day i was on the farm and um the admin staff two of them came around and after spending like five minutes or ten minutes on the farm they started complaining i can't even stay here this place is too hot man this is we need to go back to the office and all of that and i looked at myself wait though <laughs> this is where i stay from monday to friday and one of them um at that point didn't even have a bs she just had hnd and because she knew the boss and all of that she was working as an admin i just looked at myself and at that point i think that was where this thought the thought of uh yeah, yeah this is what you deserve this is what you can do um you know i started having those depressing thoughts like after studying so hard in school graduating well and having such good results see where you have um ended up and I started having that thought and it started to like get bigger and get bigger in my head. You know how one little thought would just come to you and I started to dwell on it a lot. And I don't know if I've already mentioned in this video that the living environment wasn't exact, exactly the most um, comfortable experience um, anyone could have, have, could have had because I had to live inside a container. <laughs> 
of course it was a farm and they were still trying to like build the houses for people to stay so they bought or made containers and we had to leave and you know how containers can get under hot sun like it wasn't a palatable experience but i kept telling myself that blessing you need the experience and i didn't know where to draw the line which is something i feel people don't get to talk about a lot they talk about the fact that um you need to you know volunteer you need to do this you need to do that but where is the line where is that point where you draw the line and demand what you truly deserve because i wasn't treated right okay the final straw that broke the finals um the camel's back for me was when i was sick and i had to go to work so i carried my bag and went to work that morning and the previous week there was really no food on the farm for us to eat so immediately i got to the office that morning i approached the hr and told her that last week there was really no food i don't want a situation where i go to farm and there's nothing to eat and all of that she said oh don't worry it's gonna be sorted out <laughs> so i went to the farm now hoping but as god will have it there was no food on that farm till friday i was sick there was no food it was far from town it's not a place that you can just vex and say let me buy food and plus how much was i even earning then so i could not even when i actually wanted to buy the food i had to wait for people that were going to town i sent them in the morning they came back in the evening so i was just literally just living on gary drinks and i was actually very sick so that was the end of it for me and when the hr came to the farm i think she came to the farm that week and i told her i didn't get the response i expected and that was when I started to you know at that point I, I broke down i started to cry like i deserve better than this nobody deserves to be treated this way nobody deserves and i just told myself you know what i'm done i'm really done like i'm so done so that friday when i was leaving the farm i packed all of my things meanwhile there was a rule that you should um what's it called you should give a month's notice before you quit but at that point my mental health <laughs> I just remember something but anyways my mental health was like at stake and i just really needed to go so i packed all of my things and left the place if i when i go back to the office because normally they'll take you to the office first then you get home from there so when i got to the office the receptionist saw me and said how is it possible that you look slimmer just from between monday and now i said you people stabbed me like i said it with so much pain i tried not to cry so i carried my bag and went home that day i didn't even i wanted to see the um my direct supervisor that day but he wasn't on seat the hr was not around i needed to go home and treat myself so i carried my bag and went home it was when i got home that i now truly told my parents what i'd been experiencing because i didn't even tell them everything that was happening the fact that where we used to pass to the farm was where they used to kidnap people in Ibadan. it was very popular then we used to pass there at night pass there like different points though we had like civil defense people that follow us from time to time but it was quite risky right like i remember there was a day we were going to the farm and we were approaching that place and it looked like what the, so what the those people do is they'll pack a truck on the road and then as people are coming they would have to slow down so they'll come around so we could see the trucks on the road and then the civil defense i was in their car civil defense people started telling themselves get ready they started cocking their guns i was like oh my god this is serious my parents don't even know i'm going through this i just kept telling myself don't worry go through it get the experience but um i think i'm just going to ask this as a question where do you draw the, draw the line between trying to do what you want to do and actually getting what you deserve because like i said no person no human deserved that treatment i got not somebody that graduated with a bsc i was getting that kind of pay i didn't mind i didn't mind the risk that was involved i just wanted the experience but when it got, got to the point of starving me i don't know i'm trying not to get emotional here <laughs> so it was then i now told my parents everything that had been happening my parents were like what you are not doing the job again it's okay uh, you'll be fine and all of that and on my sick bed i had to call a friend that please can you help me just type a resignation letter just send it to me so the person typed it for me sent it to me so i went to like um submit it on monday like the following monday so when i got to the office i gave the hr the resignation letter and then she wanted to know why of course then i told her what happened and it was the way she 
belittled my experience that really got me she was like um they did not even agree to feed me in the first place hello you're paying me how much um monday to friday i don't even want to get so so she went like oh they did not agree to feed me in the first place made her, she sounded like them feeding me was them even doing me a favor and that um i can't resign i have to still like give them a month's notice all of that i literally told her right now i'm going through a lot i'm sick because i was actually sick i just felt i needed to show up that day and just end it all so i said right now i'm not feeling fine i'm not just physical heal, uh, physical illness i'm not in a good place mentally i need to like get some time away from that farm away from this environment and you know and she kept saying no blah all she was interested in was the fact that i wasn't giving them a month's notice and the fact that they had paid me they had paid me for the month i worked for <laughs> so she was like they had paid me i said um i worked for this month you're talking about she said and the rule is if i don't give them a month's notice i have to forfeit that salary everything i was saying that was all she was concerned about so i told her to give me the company's um account number that I was going to send the money back to them that if it's money i would rather i just want to survive so i got the company's account number and I wanted to see my direct boss at that point. He was still not on seat. So I said, okay, I'm just going to talk to him over the phone. So I left. As I was leaving the office, I was crying. Like I was, somebody went to drop me. A colleague went to drop me at the junction. I was literally talking to him and I was crying because I was hurt. I felt really bad. Like I, I don't deserve to be treated this way and all of that. You know? So it happened. And I got home. I told my cousin, told my siblings, told people. And they were like, you know what? You're not going to drop that money. These were people that were trying to like convince me to leave the job. Like you deserve better. People that even knew how much they were offering were like, this stress is too much for this amount. But I kept saying, you know, it's the experience that matters. It's the experience that matters. Until, and funny thing is, <laughs> as children of God, eh, we actually led. Before all those things began to happen, there was like a particular month that I felt it so strongly that my end, like it was time for me to leave that place. But I kept holding on. Uh, you know how it's, it's very hard for you to just... <laughs> Sometimes when I read the story of Abraham, I was like, how easy could it have been for someone to leave a familiar territory and move into the unknown? So that was the situation for me. I was like, at least no matter how small this pay is, I'm getting paid. And that, that comfort, I didn't want to leave that comfort, even though it wasn't comfort in quotes, but I didn't want to leave it. I didn't want to forfeit it. So it was really hard for me, even when I knew that my time had come to an end there, I still continued until it got to a point where I had to leave the place in a not so good way so i wish i listened and i left earlier but thank god i spoke to someone that at that point in his career i was working in a very good place but he had god that it was time for him to move and go into you know business and all of that and he moved i was like this is someone that even has more comfort than me that is obeying god so at that point everything started to come together and i wish i listened and obeyed earlier so yeah, that was it. It now took me time to recover from the feeling of, oh, you are not enough. If you deserve better, they would have treated you better, you know. And the funny thing is there was someone in that same um, office, in that same workplace, that studied the same course I studied. In fact, probably did not graduate with the results as good as mine, but he was like my direct boss. And then he was doing well and though he came in because the way we all came in was different but i was like okay look at him he's like carrying the same results you are carrying so it's obvious that you don't deserve better you probably just have um book knowledge you are book smart but you can't apply it in a work environment that's why they are treating you like that and all of that i kept falling i kept sinking deeper and deeper into that depressing thought and it took me a while before god because only god could have brought me out of that before god brought me out of that and i began to see myself as god sees me i began to see myself through the lens of god's word and it wasn't a good time for me i tried to put pictures and videos here and there of while i was on the farm you know being on the farm now i had some bone. my skin has still not recovered from that period in my life I, will, I had insect bites, I had different reactions and all of that, but I kept on. Anyways, I hope my story is not too depressing. 
have you ever had such an experience before how did you deal with it have you ever had to walk out of um a place that you felt was not so good for you how did the end have you ever been in a situation where you felt that you should do what you have to do until you can do what you can do how did it end up for you i want to hear from you in the comment section i hope you got one or two things from this video so thank you so much for watching this video till i see you again in my next story time video if you watch this video to this point i have not subscribed to my channel that is wickedness in the purest form <laughs> okay so please subscribe to my channel put on the um notification so you get notified every time i put up a new video share this video with your friends and thank you so much for watching once again see you in the next one bye